This season has come to a close, y'all. I know. We had such a good time. On this episode, Tarian and I recap some of our conversations this season and shed a few highlights of the year and end with some holiday cheer. 2020 has been a rocky road, but we made it. Thank you to all of our guests and you, our fabulous MCs who tune into our show week after week. We look forward to bringing you more beautiful Black voices next season and possibly a few new surprises. Happy holidays to you and yours, and we'll see you on the other side of 2021. Welcome to Melanated Conversations. Our narrative and our perspective. Here on the podcast, we are amplifying the voices of Black women and sharing their powerful stories of transformation. I'm Tyrion. And I'm Yana. Let's start the show. Welcome, welcome back to another episode of Melanated Conversations. I am your co-host, Yana. And I am your co-host, Tarian. Welcome back, y'all. Woo woo ba doo doo. <laughs> <laughs> it's just us today, Yana. Twin. Twin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, this has been a crazy, phenomenal, sad, joyous. Whatever, insert your word here, year. It's been a bowl full of everything. Yes. Yes, it really, really has. We've literally felt, you know, we've had to really sit with our emotions this year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when you think about how normally people are busy and you can you can be out and about and sometimes you can kind of keep life going and not have to like sit and process things. We've had to sit and process stuff this year. Whether we wanted to or not, we've had to do that. Put us all on pause. This Didn't he though? But in, in a lot of ways, in a good way, in a good way. For um, sure. If you guys are listening, that's what she said, set presidents of what this show is today. So this is our wrap up slash holiday um, episode as we wrap our season three. Yes. Yeah, three seasons. It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. It does not. It's yeah. Season three. That's wild. What we need is we done had what a, a a fall, spring, summer. Now we're going into winter. Now we're going into winter. We almost had all four seasons. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, when you think about it, are we technically have gone we through? have? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we've been doing this for a year now. Yes. For over a year now. Yeah. Absolutely. Again, y'all, this wouldn't be possible without y'all. I mean, it kind of would be because we'd still be talking, but mm-hmm. we wouldn't have the machine like y'all behind us and encouraging us to keep this going. Um, believe it or not, uh, we get a lot of y'all that reach out to us um, that listen to the show and give us a lot of good feedback and tell us that we've made y'all cry. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't mean to make y'all cry. <laughs> yeah. Y'all to be making people cry while she be crying. I can't help it. <laughs> Just how I'm, how I'm wired. But no, we wanted to use this, take this opportunity today to quickly just, you know, Recap and thank all of our guests um, from season from this season, this phenomenal season three. Mm-hmm. We such some, and we got deeper this 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 season. I feel like this is probably the deepest we've gone in our show, and we plan to go even deeper. I agree. Oh yes. I want to know what we got coming? Up. <laughs> we got to dip into the deep end. Oh, oh. 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 they going there. There we're going now. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, this season has been just like I said, the, the conversations have been so intimate and the ladies mm-hmm. have been so transparent and sharing their stories and their journeys with us while giving us so much great advice and so much just, I don't know, just all around joy. 
Absolutely. Even though we might have had some hard conversations on some topics, it still has always been a joyous talk with everyone that we've had. It's been fun. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of these women, it, it's been joyous and I think therapeutic to, to a certain degree because we we were able to have conversations that, you know, you and I have talked about, but then you bring in somebody else and they're an expert in that field. And sometimes they're either validating the things that we've been thinking or feeling or things that we've expressed. And, you know, just like you said, because we've been able to go so much deeper and have these deeper, deeper level conversations is for me, it's been, I think, therapeutic to a certain degree. And these women were dropping, dropping gems on us. And I think if nothing else through their stories and their experiences and their expertise, they've empowered us and hopefully you, the listeners, to keep pushing forward and standing in your truth and blazing trails as Black women. And to our non-Black women, to stay in the fight with us and support us. Don't be trying to take the reins, but just stand in the gap with us. That's that's that we need y'all. We can black women, we get it done. The tr- trust. We we get it done, but um we we all benefit from this when we all do this together. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. If anything that this year hasn't if you are just waking up to this year. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we know that that for for us that are melanated, a lot of things that we had to process and experience this year this hasn't been new to us unfortunately. It was a little different in capturing maybe a few people. And I say a few because at the time it made it seem like everybody was jumping on board. But the mm-hmm. true measure of someone's work and really investing in what they stand behind, you, you will see that through their actions. Yeah. And, you know, with a lot of things that happen, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement and things that happen with um, a lot of our Black men and women this year, Mm -hmm. you know, it let the door open for more deeper conversations and some work to be done, but there's still so much more that can be done, shall be done, and will be done. Absolutely. Um, But it did, like I said, shed light on a lot of people that are just, you know, they use this as a way to build themselves or Mm -hmm. I don't know to they're not doing it for the right reasons monetize and capitalize we don't want that like if you're not truly about really moving (laughs) moving the needle in this in in you know and pushing I'm just saying black people forward because and that's not to say that you know that this is not a, this this conversation is not an all lives matter thing because mm-hmm. we know we know what that means. Right. Everyone knows that a life matters, and that includes every life. Right. But what we're talking about specifically and specifically this year, if you have not learned that lesson, I'm gonna need you to go back to chapter one. Come and on. Re-educate yourself mm-hmm. on truly caring for a black life. Come on. That's Absolutely. Black life from conception to death, to the to the old. Yeah. Absolutely. And one thing about black folk, at least from my perspective, is you can talk all the talk you want. Say, oh, I support, I believe, I that you can get on Facebook and write a long booty post. I don't care. If you are not putting action behind those words. They are empty, imp, imp, and, and not you know, like it makes it worse. It's almost like a slap in the face. Absolutely, and but and not only that. Nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, we can usually tell. There's like a little suspicion there, and be like, I don't even, I don't even trust the the things that you have just typed or even said because your actions are not backing it up. It is clearly it's evident. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you you can get up and talk a good game all you want to, but we can, we can see through that, that whole real recognized real that's, we can see through that. So I'm going to leave that there. We've talked, we've had a lot of these conversations. If you're just not tuning in to us throughout our show, but especially in season three, 
So I would encourage you to check out our group chat episode with Leah mm-hmm. Watson. As we talked about social justice and really moving the needle in that way. There for all black people. For all. Black people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All. All. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've talked about navigating what it's like from a first responder in the profession, how it is navigating through this pandemic Mm -hmm. and really, truly, you know, how we can do our part in helping ease some of the things that they're, that they're having to, you know, put themselves on the front lines for us. They're soldiering for our lives. And the least that we can do is pay them back by doing our part as simple as wearing a mask, staying at home, social um, distancing, social distancing. (laughs) We we know everything. Right. Um, So, you know, check out that episode we've had, Mm -hmm. um, you know, this time of the year. I mean, at this time of the year, but this year in general, as we mentioned, has, you know, had a a lot of highs and lows and maybe for some people just been all lows, some highs. But, you know, it's affected us in a way and and our mental that probably in ways a lot of people haven't experienced before had to sit in because we have been constantly on the move and had to we've been able to like escape a lot of mm-hmm. the pain, but mm-hmm. having to sit down in that pain and in the same space can, it it can do some, some work on you. Absolutely. Mentally. And we've had various women from experts and um, therapists from women who, you know, have gone through and sharing their own mental journeys and yeah. how um, they've gotten the care that they need into uh, and us talking about, you know, especially in the black community in our world, not making that topic so far in or so. Yeah. Um, yeah. There are a lot of great tips um, and how you can navigate through that and how you can seek help. And, you know, if it's not you, if it's someone, you know, how you can support someone that is navigating through and how, and helping them seek help. Absolutely. Um, so definitely check that episode out too. Yes, yes. We also have historic election uh, this year. Uh, I think in a in a lot of ways historic. Um, <laughs> we you know elected the very first Black Asian female vice president, first woman ever to hold this office, first Black woman to hold this office. First Asian woman to hold this office, first minority to hold this office, first HBCU graduate to hold this office, first divine nine member to hold this office. You talk about historic. I mean, how much like what else? (laughs) What else do I need to say? Shout out to Georgia, Georgia. Shout out to Stacey Abrams. Shout out to uh Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Shout out to uh Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Shout out to Detroit, Michigan, our big black cities. You know what I'm talking about? I'm sorry, I'm getting excited. But shout out to y'all because black people, black women showed up and showed out. Showed out. We applaud you. Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. There's still so much work to do there. Absolutely. No, you're you're right. Because that I was thinking that while you were speaking earlier, you know, as historic as this election was or is and has been, it, nothing else, it should be a motivating factor for us to really put in the work. This is not the time to now sit back, relax and twiddle our twiddle our thumbs. This is the time now we've been holding this current administration accountable, although they have not been listening to us. And we will do the same for this incoming administration. We will do the same thing for our local officials. We will do the same thing for our state officials. We are going to hold people accountable. We are their boss. We put them in office. So now we are going to require the utmost from these individuals. And if they don't do what we ask of or put into place things that we have required of them, then y'all know what to do. Y'all know what to do. I know Georgia has a huge um, runoff election coming up in January. Mm-hmm. I think with Loeffler and uh, 
Why can oh, I not? Oh, stop. I was, I was going to say, oh, somebody. And I know it blessed. Forgive me. Uh, yeah, between Laughlin and Osaf, Georgia, y'all know what y'all need to do. I know y'all already y'all already got that under wraps, but handle your business in January. And so, yeah, this, like I said, it's like you said, again, a lot of a lot of thing, a lot of things have happened this year, um, and some not so great, and some really really great. But if that's not a grand picture of just what life mm-hmm. is, twenty twenty, we have experienced life. In a realm of 12 months that has felt like three years. <laughs> and we still in 2020. <laughs> we only got a few weeks left. But I was telling Cordell that just the other day, I was like, how can a year seem so fast, but seem so slow at the same time? Girl, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but it feels like. No, I know exactly what you're saying. It feels like we've been Zooming, but staying in place. Well, we have been Zooming a lot. We've been Zooming a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> certainly zooming a lot a whole lot but yeah like we we definitely experienced the ebbs and flows of life in 2020 um and but you know what that just gives us we we I'm I'm grateful for 2020 um uh, but I am definitely looking forward to uh 2021 and I'm gonna make sure I stay up to make sure that 2020 leaves. So I'm staying up to 12 o'clock. Is, <laughs> is she gone? <laughs> is she gone? Is she leave? Okay, good. I think we still gonna be looking back like looking over our shoulders. <laughs> Bracing I'm need Lord. About an hour to, to sit in 2021 and feel what to feel it first. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yeah. So yeah, y'all, thanks again for tuning in for our season three. Like I said, we got more in store, so st- stick it, stick through with us. Before we go, y'all know we can't go without no, without playing a little something, something. I don't know what we're playing, but we're playing something. That might we, be the game. Little something, something. Little something, something. I don't know. Just gonna play it's something real Christmas. quick. You know, Christmas. Crema, Mar Crema. Um, and yeah, you know how black people like to do. We stay playing games. So, <laughs> you know, we're going to play the usual. Don't drop the mic. I don't know, whatever you call it. A little something, something. <laughs> we might have a new name for it next season. You never know. We like to switch stuff up. <laughs> we are ever evolving. So we may drop a new segment. We may you not- never. We, we may you change know. a name. We may not. Just you never know. Y'all gonna, is, what ain't changing is me and Tyrion. Come on. Let the people know. And Lord willing. Lord willing. Lord willing. Facts. Big facts. All right. You know, I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to give you four options. You uh, tell me, eh, you know, what you think the right answer is. I'll tell you whether it's right or not. There may be some more where we just can, you know, go back and forth and whatever, whatever. All right. What you want. Come on. Hey, are you in the, is that from, because you sent me that video this morning? <laughs> Why did I go and download the thong song after that? <laughs> you was even doing the little dance or tell me that. I know what the dance, the little hop step. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, they was getting it. My goodness. All right. First question. In Love and Basketball, the movie, Love and Basketball, what does Quincy say to Monica after he wins their game before his wedding? So remember that last night, he's getting married the next day. They play that game. Yeah. I didn't even have to give you no options. Well, no, let me tell you, my was it seventh or eighth grade coach, Coach Williams. He used uh-huh. to play that movie. I think every Friday we had to watch. I don't know even know if there's appropriate for us to watch. Thinking back now in junior high, but we watched that movie like every other Friday. Are you serious? <laughs> he ain't black out the Maxwell scene. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Y'all gonna know. Y'all know. Y'all gonna learn about it eventually. Oh, I'm supposed to give you one, but I ain't got I don't know. All right, this is the next this is one we can just discuss. Okay, okay. Kinda, maybe. I'll see. We'll see. All right. Which legendary label had the most impact on the rap game? So this is kind of opinion based. Uh Def Jam on the rap game. On the rap game. Yeah, which label had the most impact on the rap game? Mm. Def Jam, No Limit, Death Row, or Bad Boy? So it really depends. I mean, they, ooh, 
each of them brought their own different kind of like you know element right you know, right that's it was more of a I was going to say, who are the heavy hitters that came out of each of those labels? So Def Jam. Did Jay come out of Def Jam? See, that's not Jay-Z and LL? With like imprints of different labels. I can't, I don't, I don't remember. I know LL Cool J was part of Def Jam. Right. Uh, okay, you had Percy Miller, Master P, out of No Limit. <laughs> See, and you think about, okay, you think about where we from. We from the South. So right. We into some, some N-O, some Nolans. Knowledge, period. Master P and them make like, them like, say, uh. before it like really just blew around the world. It was, yeah, that is. And why I like the others, let me tell you why I'm gonna go with Master P. Just, I mean, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm, I'm just it's no limit, but I'm gonna say Master P because he yeah, made, yeah. Well, I guess Diddy kind of was too, you know, he 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 got his little reins up, up, he worked his way up, he worked his way up. See, with Bad Boy, you kind of got like a CD out of him. Yeah. What I liked about No Limit was the fact that, and this is, and they, I think it goes with kind of what our brand stands for, is uplifting our own and our culture. And we doing it yeah. our way. Is he, I love, him for one, first and foremost, so you give me nostalgia now. Sure. Let's I look at I love them colorful CDs, them cases. Yes. And what I love was his pure marketing genius. I don't care what nobody say about Master P. Come on. That brother was a marketing genius. Every Agreed. CD. You open that case on for your new list. I mean, I'm not saying new listeners. I'm talking about these new kids on the block. The y- are younger opening, cutting open that that hard seal on the case and open that, case that first pop, and then you slide that little that little slip of paper. Out. Yes, Ooh. yes. A little shiver just thinking about it. But when you open up that slip in a no limit CD, come on. Not only do you get the the artist that you're listening to, but you get to see what's coming. And he marked yes. every artist, every album that was coming up. On yes, MVD. yes, yes. The self promotion, you know, he started his label from and from his what was it, his um, grandfather's life insurance policy. Mm-hmm. It was just him and Rome. Was it Romeo at the time? Just him? no, or, no. Uh, I, I want to. I, I could be wrong, but someone. Who, who's his oldest son? Oh, uh, maybe it was Romeo. Romeo. Yeah, you're say, right. I think that's why him and Romeo had such a good. You're right. Bond because he started his record company off of that, and he was living out of that store until he was you know he was on the- i didn't know that yeah i, mean, I didn't need to go back and watch so hard for master because the- right you know the full story you know the full story but yeah that was one of the that's one of the reasons why i say no limit all of them don't get me wrong influence the culture yeah put out some great talent but the grind that grind and then they're putting on for everybody yeah that's why I wrote it. I think out of all of these labels, No Limit had to be one of the only labels. Now I'm looking at like immediately off the top of my head that had like a female in their lineup. Mia X? Mia X. Yeah. And I think the only I reason why had she... Had e. Was <sighs> Eve going to I don't know, but... She was... Rough Riders. Rough Riders was probably under... Def Jam, maybe. I think they was Def Jam, yeah. They probably were on the Def Jam. So, okay. But still, I, I think that th- there's still a difference between Mia X and Eve. And that's no shade to Eve. Right. At all. But uh, there, there, there is a difference there. And I think the only reason why Mia X kind of like had to step away was like, there were a lot of deaths in the family or something like that that happened. Yeah. And but Mia X was like, a, I last time I checked, like she was like a whole professor or something now. I think she did not know X. that. Come on, Dr. X. <laughs> professor X. Professor, the Dr. X professor is, but, but yeah. She From the X Men. Yeah. She is Professor X. Gosh. So, yeah, you know, I, I don't even know if I can necessarily answer that. I, I, I agree because, you know, uh, 
like you said, just being a Southerner, No Limit did something that mm-hmm. most people at, at the time, at the rise of No Limit, like we were rocking with No Limit super hard before before everybody else got with it. The beats alone, you just be don't. Don't don't yes don't 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 hey <laughs> <laughs> are you jumping in a game let's get one thing done this uh. if you're selling that ice cream you better make sure it's good, good. mr ice, ice cream man, man. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna take y'all back because I can go. Yeah. <laughs> ooh, I missed the ice cream. Man. Um, yeah. So, ooh, um, yeah. The most impact on the rap game. No limits a strong one. Ooh, I'm gonna have to say bad boys after that because bad boy, they had a they had a nice strong yeah, yeah. run. Death because I feel like death row. Death Row gave us Pac, but then out of Death Row, you got Dre, Pac. I mean, you say Death Row or Death Jam? There's a Death Jam and Death Row. Oh, Death but Jam, that, but that was an option too. Yeah, Death mm-hmm. Row and Death Jam? yeah. I, mm-hmm. I just heard, I, I I missed Death Row. I just heard Death Jam for some reason. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like Death Jam, you had like maybe Jay and um, LL, No Limit, Master P, Death Row. You had Pac, Snoop, all them. Right, um, right. Bad Boy, you had Biggie. Puff, Mace, that whole, that whole no, crew. No, that's true. So that's true. That's true. I think uh, Bad Boy was able to, probably along with Def Jam too, but I think Bad Boy was able to bring in like that, not, not it wasn't a crossover, but you, you were able to start having like, like bringing in the Mary J and having like the, I don't know, just that. Anyway. Yeah. So I don't really have an answer, but that was, yeah. Yeah. That was a Come good on. one. That was a good one. Good you want to do one more or you want to rip well, the thing on a tight on we, time? Right, right. Yeah, I know. We can yeah. continue. We can play y'all. We can play. And we can talk. We can play all day. But, but we got some business to handle. <laughs> we just wanted to <laughs> just get on here and hop and just thank y'all and to just wish everyone that is listening, you know. This year has been tough, but we've made it. Yes. And if we can't give anything, if we can't give thanks for anything else, definitely give thanks that you got breath in your body. You a- with breath man. in your body. That's 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 the money. That's the money shot right there. Yeah. That's it right there. We know Christmas and the holidays may look a little different for us this year, but you know, just sit in this with gratefulness. For mm-hmm. what you do have and what you can experience, because um, not a lot of people can say right now that they have that. Somebody right yeah. now is on a ventilator. Mm-hmm. I to come home. Come on. So when you complain about being at home, just think about somebody who's fighting for life, wanting to be home. That's right. That's right. That is, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know where you was gonna go with that. I was like, <laughs> for that joy, for that joy. Oh, like, we could have started with it. No, I was going. I was, Merry Christmas. <laughs> I was going Jackson Five on yeah. You know, it's an American dream. For the joy, for the joy, for the joy. <laughs> we thank you. Anyway, uh, yeah. So yeah, we gotta say it. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Day, Happy Oh Happy Day, <laughs> Happy New Year. Hope yes, we'll see. Well, y'all will hear us on the other side. Yes, yes, y'all might see. Y'all might see. Little, see us on there. Know. Yeah, y'all might see a little something. Yeah, check us out. Check us out. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's nothing else. For the last time this year. Melanate on that. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed our chat today. Keep the conversation going by heading to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leaving us a review. 
have a story of your own to share? Email us at info at melanatedconversations.com or connect with us on social media at Melanated Conversations. Till next time, keep raising your voice. voice.